Good evening. So good to be back together again this week. As we come together to study God's Word, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. And as you're turning there, let me just say, what's one of your favorite words that, that, that you like to, to use or that means something uh, special? Certainly the, wor the word love uh, is very special to us, family, friends. I also like the word come. Come is a very uh, useful word, I believe. Uh, come inside, come to church, uh, come to eat. I, I love that. And then in the Bible, come is also a very useful word, a very common word. Uh, we hear words of, of invitation from, from the king tonight uh, to his, his wicked nation to come and to repent, and I will bless you. Uh, come is, is, is a very merciful word. Uh, remember uh, a little later in Isaiah chapter 55, uh, all you who are thirsty, come and drink. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Uh, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Let anyone who thirsts come and drink. Uh, that's from, from John chapter 7. So have we ever accepted God's gracious invitation to come. And, and come tonight is going to have the invitation of cleansing. Come and, and be cleansed. Come and, and renew your life with me. Come to the covenant that I have established. So let's pray as we continue. Holy Spirit, as we are spending our time with the prophet Isaiah, who ministered during a very tumultuous time in Israel's history. Show us that the nation of Israel had abandoned the way of the Lord and were living open, sinful, idolatry lives. Holy Spirit, lead us to admit that sins in our own lives so that we can repent and, and live a Christ-honoring lives where we are right now. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. All right, so if you've got your Bibles and you're at Isaiah chapter 1, see how quick I can summarize the, the first 15 verses and then we'll get into to verse 16. But these first 15 verses of, of chapter 1, uh, the people of Israel, the people of, of, of Judah particularly, have uh, open rebellion uh, against God. They refuse to acknowledge God. Uh, they're sick spiritually. Uh, they're in desperate need of help. Uh, violence has filled the whole land there. Um, they have become as vile as Sodom and Gomorrah. Their religious services are an abomination to the Lord. They don't, they don't even honor him anymore. And so Paul kind of fulfills this part of the scripture in, in the New Testament in his writings from 1 Corinthians 6 beginning at verse 9 and he speaks of open rebellion too. Don't fool yourselves. Those of you who indulge in sexual sin, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, male prostitutes, homosexuals, thieves, greedy people, drunkards, abusers, swindlers, none of these, none of these will have a share in the kingdom of God. And yeah, make you stop and think. That, that sounds a whole lot like what we're experiencing today, what our news headlines are like. Every time we pick up a paper or turn on the TV or listen to the radio, look on our phones, we, we are in a bad spiritual shape, I think, too. But that's all right. There's, that's not the end. Uh, this, this is a prime opportunity for the church to invite people to come and be cleansed with us. Yeah, it sounds so terrible and it is so bad out there, but you and I know the cleansing way of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage us to invite people to come and experience God's cleansing. So let's, let's pick up now at, at Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16, and see what, 
what this, these verses have to say. We'll go 16 through 20. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But, pause just a minute, slow down. But, if you refuse and you rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So let's look at verse 16 just a minute. This, uh, this begins our cleansing here. Wash yourselves. You see where it says wash yourselves? Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your, of your doings. Uh, I came across this illustration of a health teacher in, in school had taught uh, his students about the importance of washing their hands before they, they ate. So he had, he had them to, to scrape uh, their hands and their, their fingers and their nails uh, into to an environment in a little, little dish that, that would uh, foster the growth of bacteria if there was bacteria on their hands when they scraped them. A few days later, they, they looked at the results on, on the microscope, and uh, the students just saw all kinds of little critters crawling around in all that, that bacteria, and they didn't realize just how sick it could make them if they didn't wash their hands before they, they ate. Well, many people, I think, make, make sure that they wash their hands before we eat, yet uh, we're careless about the lifestyle that we live. We, we say we believe, and yet we, we act like the world. We, we, we say we're separated from the world, but yet we participate still in worldly desires and worldly pleasures. And well, I, I'm not abusing it, so it, it's okay if I participate in that. But, but beloved, that, that's harming our, our witness. That's, that's causing the bacteria to grow. You know, one, one good thing, is a way to help us to understand if if you're doing an act that's of the world, and if I did that act of the world, how would I look in your eyes? Well, that's how we're looking in other people's eyes as well. Behind Isaiah's words here tonight is our Heavenly Father's love. Don't miss that point. Even though the Bible says if we refuse, uh, there's, there's going to be a a consequence of that. But leading up to that refusal on our part, God's always, always leading us in his love. But God says, can't you see the danger in the sin that you're doing? The, the, the physical results are, are what's listed here. He, he pleads with them to, to be careful what they take into their, into their hearts and what they take into their, their minds. Because what's in our heart and what's in our mind is going to come out of our mouth. And if we're always coming out with grumpy words, that's, that's really what's inside of us. We're a grumpy person. If we come out with joyous words, then we are filled with the Spirit. And we're showing forth that evidence. So let us keep our life to the point of whatever builds up Jesus Christ. That's what's in our mind, and that's what we want to share. And, and that will prove the cleansing. You know, and everything's fine as long as, as long as life's going good and we aren't being challenged or we aren't put under stress. I tell you, this past weekend, Donna and I had two, two wonderful weddings to be a part of. And then now this coming weekend, our daughter's getting married. And it's just wondering all the things that, that are in our minds, in our hearts. Well, we got to watch it comes out of our mouth because we want to make this a worshipful experience for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So our invitation to, to the cleansing, to come and to be clean are seen in these thoughts. God knows 
our wickedness. And, and he knows how wicked we have become. Everything that's happening today in our society is not catching God off guard. Yet, God, being God, he still loves us. And he reaches out to us in his love. And he extends his grace and mercy to us if we'll simply repent. If we simply say, I'm sorry, I acted that way, please forgive me. And through your Holy Spirit's power, fill me that I'll not do that act again. Uh, God's blessings from Isaiah still stand in, in 2020. God knows all the sins and he knows all the love that we need and he will provide that for us. And yet, you know, of all the things that are going on, he, he still loves us and he still says, come, come to me for cleansing. Beloved, when Jesus died on the cross, the door of salvation was, was open. And now God invites all of those who are trapped in sin to come. Our way to the Father is always open now. We don't have to do another thing. No one can open the door. Jesus has opened the door. And it remains open to us to come in. So let's, let's think just a minute about how personal, how, how intimate this invitation to come for cleansing is. And, and look at verse 18, God's, God's invitations here. Come now, not in a few days, not in a few years, or when you're ready, but come now, immediately. Come now, let us reason together. Uh, what the Bible is saying is let's settle this matter before a court of law. Let's try out our case in court. The people of Israel had, had broken their covenant with the Lord. They had failed to uphold their end of the covenant. Remember, uh, the first part of the, co uh, co uh, the covenant and the commandments is that we will not have any other gods before him and that we will seek only him. And that's, that's what Israel had done. They had turned away from They'd gotten caught up in what was popular in their day. Just like we get caught up today of what's popular, the popular way to talk and, and the popular places to go and, and the popular clothes to wear and, and the attitudes that we speak one to another. So here in verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 1, God has declared his case against Judah. And, and they're in serious trouble. God has called them to answer for their sins. Now that phrase, come now, look, look at that again. Th this is an invitation for these people to, to walk with the Lord. God never gives up. He's always providing a way for us to come. But he's not inviting them to come and debate him. Uh, he's, he's not inviting them to come and let's negotiate a deal with them. He's inviting them to come to his way of living. He's, in, he's, he's giving them an opportunity to say, we're sorry and we're ready to live our life your way. You're the one that has created it. You're the one that has made it. So in this personal invitation to Israel to change their ways and to come and to, and to follow after God, to get in line with God's way of thinking, is really God's grace given to them and given to us today. Beloved, we are continuing to live this very day because of God's grace. He wants to give all of us a chance to come and to love him, to follow him. The Bible says, though, that ye must be born again. Uh, that's the Elizabethan grammar, meaning ye, meaning you, meaning, meaning us, that, that we must be born again to come to Jesus and to receive his cleansing, to be reborn again. So this is an incredible uh, invitation. God's promise to Israel, if they'll come to him, that all their sins will be washed away. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 tells us that, that their hands were stained with blood, that they are, they're dirty and, and unclean in the sight. But, pause. Remember that word but. That, that's a dramatic pause. But, 
if they will answer his invitation, he will cleanse them. Verse 18 again talks about being that, that scarlet. Uh, that, that's from this, this Hebrew uh, word tolak, which, which was a, a type of uh, a worm that was used in making red dye. And it's translated scarlet. And the tolak w would attach itself to a tree as it was preparing to lay her eggs. And in the process, the mother would die, leaving this, this red stain there on, on the wood of that tree. Later, when those little babies were, were born, when they were hatched, and they, they would leave, that red stain then on the wood would, would dry up and it would turn white and flake off of the wood. Well, that's, that's a picture of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, who died on a cross of wood in the process of giving new birth to you and to me, giving us new life. So leaving a bloody stain that turns our sins from scarlet to white as snow. Only Jesus can do that. White as snow. When you read white as snow in the Bible, I want you to be thinking about that, that means total cleansing. With Jesus, we are totally clean. Now, the red dye is impossible to remove from the fabric. Once it's set in, it doesn't come out. No amount of washing or scrubbing or, or scraping will ever remove that, that red dye. This is a, a beautiful picture that presents for us that, that the Holy Spirit of God it, it washes us and from all those unholy sins that that they are completely forgotten about. And the Bible says that we are left whiter than snow, that we are as pure as, as wool. You know, that, that hymn of faith that we like to sing, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. A sinner plunges beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stains. Oh, I love that hymn. And I want to just tell you another little personal story that, that I read about evangelist E. Howard Cadle. Uh, he was born in 1884 and he died in 1942. Uh, I think he was around 58 or, or so, 50, 56, something in that area. But, but he died of Bright's disease, a kidney disease that was very popular in those days. But he was converted uh, from a life of, of drunkenness through the power of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, he was one of four children. He was kind of known as the black sheep of the family. He started drinking when he was 12 years old. He became addicted to alcohol and gambling, uh, marital adultery. Uh, he became known as the slot machine king. He went around through different states in the Midwest, Indiana and, and around in that area uh, in those days, those early days of, of delivering these, these slot machines um, really for a gambling enterprise. Uh, he attempted at one time to, to murder a man and just did escape the penitentiary. But there came a point in his life and you can read about it online or, or wherever you would like to, but he was broken financially. Uh, his health was declining. Uh, he finally hit bottom and returned home and, and collapsed into his mother's arms saying, Mother, I've, I'm tired of sin. I've broken your heart. I've betrayed my wife, broken my marriage vows, and I'd like to be saved, but I, I've sinned too much. And his mother replied, Son, I've, I've been praying for you for 12 years, waiting to hear you say, those very words. And getting out her Bible, she read to him Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And on the morning of March 14th, 1914, E. Howard Cale was converted. He later became uh, a very powerful and popular evangelistic preacher. Uh, he founded the, the Cagle Tabernacle in downtown Indianapolis, Indiana. 
it, it, it'd seat thousands of people. I think I read somewhere it could seat up to 10,000 people. Uh, and some places I read where he was, he would, his ministry would receive anywhere from 4,000 to 24,000 letters a week. Now, what will it be for us? Will we be like E. Howard Cagle and need to cleanse our lives, ask God to forgive us? If you've never done so, tonight's a good night to do that. Maybe we need to be recommit and be renewed. If we're thinking that, that America certainly needs cleansing, boy, America needs cleansing. Well, you know what? Every time we say America, we're talking about you and, and me. America isn't somewhere out west or out in the Midwest or somewhere else. America's you and me. You and me. Every time we say the church, we're not talking about the structure of this beautiful facility here. We're talking about you and me. If America needs cleansing, that means you and I do. And you know, beloved, I know that God invites us to come for cleansing. So let's pray right now. Holy Spirit, tonight, tomorrow, when you speak to us, may we settle our case with God out of court. May our lives get settled now and we'll never have to worry about it again. Have we truly heard this intimate individual call to come to Jesus for salvation? If we never have, tonight's a good night to say, I believe in Jesus. I want to be a believer in Jesus. Jesus saved me from my sins, and he will. But maybe many of us tonight who, who watch the, the recording have already believed in Jesus, but... We want to say America needs God and America needs changing and America, and really we're talking about ourselves. Holy Spirit, help us to come to God's invitation for the cleansing and renewal of our souls so that we will be white as snow, so that we will be as pure wool. Thank you for giving us this moment together. And we pray that we will bring honor to Jesus. In his precious name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. And don't forget, on Wednesday nights, our business meeting. And if you still have groceries you'd like to bring for the county food drive, that's still going on too. Please bring it to the church. Thank you, and I'll be praying for you.